Welcome, sweet friends, to the channel Frugal Money Saver. My name is Emmy. My husband is Paul. We are so happy you are here. For those of you who are new, we are an early retirement, debt and mortgage-free couple living in the state of New York. And our channel basically just shows you how to have a full, abundant life while spending less money. Today's video, we are getting back into the pantry. If you missed last Friday's video, I am gonna link it down below and it'll also be at the end of this video. We showed you a glimpse into our pantry and we made some yummy pantry meals. Well, today we are going to go into the abyss that is our pantry. We are going to show you before, we're gonna show you after, we're gonna motivate you by showing you how we're cleaning it, organizing it, inventorying it. We're going to show you the meals that we have available right now in our pantry. Then we're going to cook up two easy, frugal, delicious pantry meals. So the first thing we're going to start with is to get into the pantry. So how did our pantry get like that? I'll tell you how. I was neglectful. We would buy loss leaders, we would buy great sales, and we would put them into the pantry, and I did not organize it as I was putting it away. Now, thank goodness, nothing was expired. We were able to rotate. Everything is within date, so I feel so good about that. But we have to stay on top of our pantry. So when it looks like this, and when it gets to this, I've got to get in there and stop fooling around, pull everything out, make it clean, and do what we need to do to take care of the food we buy. Because that food in there is cash. It is money. And if we're not taking care of our food supply, then we're not taking care of our money. And that is not good. <laughs> I'm going shelf by shelf, taking everything out. We're going to wipe it down. I want to show you what Paul did a while back, which was just so helpful for me. Because the shelving had open sides and an open back and food used to fall through, honestly, what he did was he put cardboard all around on every shelf for me now so nothing falls and it works out perfectly oh yeah we still have this whole shelf but we're getting there and how paul kept the cardboard up he punched two holes in and then put wire through it works perfectly i'm continuing to take everything out and wipe everything down this is my older pantry list as you can see i've been pulling stuff off but not marking it and that is to my detriment so now at least i have everything on here I can start adding and taking away right from this list. And if it looks too messy, then I can redo it. If not, I can just cross out and add what I need to. I also have a bunch of baskets that I am not using. So we're gonna try to utilize these as well to give the pantry some order and semblance. I'm using one of the baskets right here to hold our condiments, our salsa, some buffalo wing sauce we got on clearance, some dried beans works perfectly. I'm using the other basket up here to hold pasta and another basket down here for the egg noodles and my pastina. So this will definitely help. Oh my goodness, look at this. Yay! Amazing, right? What a difference here alone. I've showed this before, but I'm going to show it again. We hang our potatoes in mesh bags that like oranges come in, things like that. The air circulates and they don't sprout. 
and they just last this way. Such a great way to store your potatoes. Over here, everything is organized. We use that little basket. Look at how much room we saved by doing this. Everything's not falling all over the place, perfect. And then our little shelf right here, and we have so much more room now. It was like all this stuff was just shoved in and we had no idea what was here. Really just feeling so much better about this. Some of the meals and snacks I can make right now from my pantry. I have got two jars of peanut butter and I have crackers to go with it. I have jarred olives and canned olives that could be mixed with pasta, a little olive oil, and cheese. We've got canned green beans, which make wonderful addition to soups and stews, and even cold with vinaigrette dressing, like I shared with you the other day. You can also add olives to that. We have got tuna that you can mix with the olives and pasta a delicious meal. We've got oats that you can make oatmeal with, cookies with, baked oatmeal. We've got canned corn, creamed corn. We've got canned beans, canned vegetables. These all can be mixed in soups and stews with meats and pasta and rice. We have got dry beans and dried barley. We have got salsa. We've got canned tomatoes that can go with the pastas, it can go with the barley, it can go with the beans. We've got cake mixes for a sweet treat. So there are a bunch of meals we could eat right out of this pantry right now if we needed to. So it's always great to stock up and know what you have. I feel so much better. Paul feels better. Dixie and Loris feel better. The whole family is happy. That pantry is organized, it's clean, I inventoried everything, and we are good to go. Isn't it amazing? I just took the camera in with me and showed you, just pulling from there, what we could eat. It's, it's amazing what a well-stocked pantry can do for you. Not counting what's in our cabinets, our freezers, and our refrigerators as well. Let me just briefly go over why it is so important to keep a well-stocked pantry. And please remember, as you are eating out of the pantry and rotating your dates and using what you need to use first, continue to stock it. Do not use everything in your pantry and it's bare. Try to keep rotating and keep replenishing. It is so important to keep food in the home and to keep a well-stocked pantry. Even though we do these eat out of the pantry challenges, we continue to stock up on lost leaders and on good sales so that pantry will never ever get low. So let's talk about why it is so important to keep a good pantry. Number one, less takeout, less eating out. When you can pull a meal together in minutes from your pantry, You've just saved yourself a ton of money. You have to think of it as money. Because even if you were to grab some tuna, mayo, crackers, and green beans, you have a meal right there. There is no reason you need to get into your car and drive to a drive through or drive to a restaurant. You got everything you need. Another reason keeping a well-stocked pantry is so important. It eliminates those quick trips to the store to pick up ingredients because you stock what you eat and what you need. If you're looking for a can of mixed vegetables to add to your stew, it's already in there. If you're looking for egg noodles to add to a casserole, well, guess what? They're already in there. You don't have to hop in your car and run to the store. Please make sure you are stocking your pantry with food you actually eat. There's nothing worse than stocking your pantry with a really great priced item that you don't like because I guarantee you, you will not eat it and you'll either donate it, which is fine. Please donate it. Don't let it go bad and toss it. So buy items you eat, please. Another reason to keep a well-stocked pantry because it makes your cooking time and your meal planning fast, 
and efficient. When it comes to meal planning, pull out your inventory of your pantry. Pull out your inventory of your freezer and plan meals around the items you already have. You will save a ton of money doing it that way. And the best reason to keep a well-stocked pantry is because it helps you feel relaxed and in control. And that is the truth because God forbid you're not feeling well, you don't have to run out and get food. You have everything you need in the home. If people drop by, well, you know what? You can put a pasta meal together in, in 10 minutes. Boil some pasta, you've got olives, you've got tomatoes, delicious. You can add a can of vegetables. You're always prepared. You're ready for the unexpected by keeping a well-stocked pantry. And that's gotta be the best blessing of them all. We hope we did not horrify you with our pantry shots of the before, but at least you could see we did some work and it came out so well. So we hope this was encouraging and motivating to you. Now, let's get into the kitchen and create two easy pantry and refrigerator freezer meals from things that we already have in the house. So let's turn this camera around and get into the kitchen. We are continuing to eat out of our pantry and our freezer. Just thought I would encourage you with this. So I took out a pound of ground beef, eight ounces for tonight and then eight ounces for tomorrow. So what are we having here? We are having tacos. I have the eight ounces of ground beef. I have an open container of sour cream, an open container of salsa. I have the taco shells that we bought on clearance for $1.09, an avocado, I have a tomato, we have some provolone cheese that I just took out of the freezer because any cheese is good on a taco. We have already prepared salad and it has got a little bit of cucumbers, lettuce, carrots. This will be great on a taco. Perfect, and we don't have to make anything else. And yes, we always lay a clean paper napkin on top, and then we cover it, keeps it nice and fresh. Then for tomorrow, another half a pound of ground beef. I'm going to make meatballs out of this. I got a couple pieces of stale bread, which I'll add to that. And we're gonna make sweet and sour meatballs. And we have a can of pineapple, we have leftover rice, and then I just need some brown sugar, a little soy sauce, and then I'm going to put in a bag of frozen stir-fry vegetables. Two meals, ready to go, pantry, freezer, refrigerator items only. What I do when I make tacos is I never use a seasoning packet. You can make it at home cheaper, better, less sodium. I browned the ground beef. I drained it, all the oil out. I add a little bit of salsa. Little bit of paprika. And always do this after you drain the meat. Because if you do it before, you're draining out all the spices. A little chili powder, onion powder, and you do this to taste. And a little bit of garlic powder. Now you can definitely add cumin. We just don't care for cumin. I add just a tiny bit of water and then we just cook this down. It's gonna thicken and it is going to be so tasty. You can add salt and pepper as well, but I think we got a lot of good flavors going on here. So I'm just gonna cook this for a minute till it reduces and you have a delicious homemade taco seasoning without the packet. Voila, dinner is served. We got a little veggie, we got a little dairy, we got a little protein, we got a little carb. Perfect pantry meal all together in one yummy taco. Super frugal. We are revisiting our dear friend Betty Crocker again tonight. This is the one circa 1978. We just made the tacos 
and it is Sabbath for us tomorrow. So what we're going to do, we're is going to prep some meatballs and we're going to be making sweet and sour meatballs for tomorrow. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to make the meatballs now and then I will also cook the sweet and sour sauce, which is super easy right on the stove. And then tomorrow what I'll do is I'll combine everything and heat it through and, and add some frozen stir fry vegetables to it as well. We've got our half a pound of ground beef. I am going to add a whole egg, even though I'm only using half the meat cold for. I've got a piece of white bread. It says about a half a cup of dry breadcrumbs, but I'm just doing a piece of dry bread, and I think this will be perfect. Just watch your fingers if you do this. I always tell you that when it gets small, dump it in. An eighth of a cup of milk. I'm gonna add a little onion powder. We don't really care for onion in our meatballs, like pieces of onion. I'm gonna give it a splash of this sauce. I'm not even gonna <laughs> try to pronounce it. Worcestershire. Yeah, there you go, just a little. And salt and pepper to taste. I'm gonna make some meatballs now. I did add more breadcrumbs. I took another piece of bread and grated it. I think adding the whole egg was a little too much with a half a pound of beef, but it's fine. So we added a little more bread. I bake my meatballs, I don't fry them, so they're gonna go into a 400 degree oven till they're fully cooked, about 15 to 20 minutes. For our sweet and sour meatballs, I've got a cup of pineapple, and in that cup I added juice as well. I always get my pineapple in 100% juice. I don't get it in the heavy syrup. This is just tastes so much better because we're adding sugar anyway. <laughs> so a quarter cup of brown sugar. I am going to put two tablespoons of white vinegar. I am halving the recipe. That's why this is a little less than it showed in the book half a tablespoon of cornstarch. I do not have any soy sauce in the house, did not know it. So I looked it up and second on the list as a substitute for soy sauce is this sauce again. So I am just gonna put a splash of that in. And now I'm just gonna whisk this until it gets just a little bit thicker. So this has been at a low boil just for a few minutes and you can see how this is thickening beautifully. This is going to be so good over those meatballs. If we wanna add more pineapple, of course we can. And we're also going to be adding this package of stir fry vegetables to it as well. So I'm gonna put this back in the freezer till tomorrow. And then all I'm going to have to do is take our meatballs and this yummy sauce and the vegetables and I will put them in a large skillet and just saute all that together. Oh my goodness, will that be perfect and everything will be done. These cooked just about 20 minutes. They are done. They look wonderful. So we're going to let those cool for just a little bit. Our sauce got Thick and I just tasted it. Oh my goodness, it's perfect. After the meatballs and the sauce cool just a little bit, we're going to put them in the refrigerator till tomorrow and then we'll take them out. We'll combine them with the stir fry veggies in a pan and we have a delicious meal because guess what? Remember we showed you, we have leftover rice as well. So we are good to go. Another pantry meal down. The sweet and sour meatballs were amazing. The reason I didn't film the actual preparation of the meatballs and the sauce and the veggies coming together was because it was our day of rest. I took the vegetables out of the freezer and I sauteed them gently with a little sesame oil. And then after they were cooked crisp, tender, I added the meatballs, I added the sauce, and just cooked it all together until it was heated through. It was the easiest meal ever, and so delicious. Give that one a try. I'm telling you, Betty Crocker is my idol, and I think she's gonna continue to be my idol. Today's question of the day. How do you organize your pantry? Do you inventory it? 
Do you date every can with big bold letters? Do you sort it by meal? I know a lot of people will take items that go together in a pantry meal and put them together. How do you keep your pantry organized? And for that matter, your freezer organized. What do you do to keep your meal planning and your meal time running efficiently, keeping the cost down? How do you all organize your food supply? Please share that with us down below because it won't only encourage Paul and I, but our viewers as well. What we wanna to touch upon right now, some of the emails and comments we've been getting about people saying they were subscribed to our channel and they're no longer subscribed, or they're not getting notifications when we put a video out. And we don't want that. We wanna make sure you are getting every video or short or community message we're putting out. So I'm gonna turn this camera around and just show you again how to make sure you are subscribed if you're a subscriber and how to make sure you are still getting all our videos, all our community conversations, everything that we put out. So I'm gonna turn this camera around, we're gonna get on the computer. This is our home page, Frugal Money Saver. What you do is just go to youtube.com, put Frugal Money Saver in. And you see this little button that says subscribe right here? Click on it. Once you subscribe, it turns into this little notification bell. You click again and you go to all. Now you'll get all our notifications, whether it be on the community board or whether it is our videos. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit all. So we hope that clears up some issues. We're not sure how this happens, that people get unsubscribed or don't receive notifications. But if you follow the steps we just showed you, then hopefully this will work. We thank you so much for spending your time with us. We appreciate you all so much. Viewers that have been with us for the last several years, to those of you who maybe just found us today, you have no idea how important you are to us. We ask that you please give this a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. We ask that you be well. We ask that you stay safe. And above all, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, may God greatly bless you.